Oh, thank you for coming in and thank you for staying for that third panel. I'm sure like all of you are really exhausted. So please like get coffee and some snack and then like push up your like blood sugar so that you stay, all of us stay awake for this wonderful um, opportunity to um, um, have two presenters. And I think I'm going to introduce Mark Nones, uh, Professor Nones first, then when after his presentation, I'm going to briefly introduce Professor Nika Tomita. So I don't know like, if I really need to, to, to introduce Mark, Mark uh, Professor Nones, because he is already really an established figure in his um, field. Uh, but like, just, uh, just, just to, to, to follow the convention, so his latest book is a research guide to Japanese cinema studies, which is extremely informative and useful resource, especially like for teachers, I think, um, or for students as well. And, and also, um, and which was co-written with Aaron Darrow, like the, uh, Professor Darrow, who just gave a paper in this second panel. And also, uh, another recent publications include, his uh, recent publication includes Cinema Bubble, Translating Global Cinema. And also, he, he extensively wrote on like Japanese documentary film history, uh, such as Forest of Pressure, and also Japanese documentary film from the Meiji era to Hiroshima. And also he published uh, in a numerous magazines, including Cinema Journal or Film and Film Quarry. So um, today, um, he, I, I was informed that he is going to do show and tell, which I was very excited to uh, be part of. So please. Um, thank you. So um, thank you very much for these two interesting papers. I, I had a really like, um, so I, I think you, you all noticed that we, the third panel is given longer time. I mean, this time slot in this um, 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 conference, in symposium, especially because uh, the nonfiction film collection um, is one of the strongest um, uh, collect uh, materials in Makina collection, and then we have this this really perfect person to introduce materials like such as like Professor Nones, and also Professor Professor Tomita is now working on the collection, and she comes to the library like every day <laughs> to work on the, uh, all these materials. So like, we have two most wonderful perfect person and uh, people to present. Um, these papers. Okay, so first, um, um, I the Professor Nones's paper introduced extremely interesting um, dynamics of like politics of translation, um, and so I was very much intrigued, especially because I worked on Atsuki Taka, and she was part of my dissertation topic. Topic. So like I, I really learned a lot when. Um, Professor Nones's uh, paper um, was published like 10 years ago. It was I, so it was sort of has a nostalgic. Mo I had a sort of nostalgic <laughs> moment too, and also kind of remember it when I spoke to Mr. Makino about Atsugi's uh, collection and in his like you know the, in his house. He said, "Okay, we were going to take um, a dog you know, to walk first, and like, we talked like when we were to walking his dog, and then <laughs> dog did whatever like he had to do, and then like we came back and then like <laughs> had a look at um, materials, and so like yeah, definitely like Professor Nonis's talk really like brought me back all these kind of fond memories, but also like the very like claustrophobic." space like <laughs> really in his house I mean like it's really like oppressive space that you always wonder like you know what if you have an earthquake you're going to be really crushed under all these books um, and then also like the sterile cases were a little bit like um, how do you say like it's not really like you know um, straight anymore like it's a little bit like bent because of the all weight of the books but anyway so um so the Professor Nones' uh, talk is in, in a way related to um, the translingual practice that um, Professor Bao introduced this morning. Um, in terms, so like we um, also, um, especially like I was interested, well, so the translation of this documentary film uh, by Paul Rosa became a sort of battlefield 
and it just, the battlefield was a written text, and so it was a theory. And I want so the translators' mistranslation or misunderstanding or inability to understand the foreign language all like provided an interesting like different kind of like discourses um, for um, people in the circle, uh, the film circle. But also, can we say that the state was also a translator, sort of meta translator, which provided this narrative framework that people either have to avoid or like sort of work around or totally join in. Um, so also, it is interesting that, especially toward the, um, uh, the enactment of 1939 film law, it seems like discourse on the film medium specificity and also filmmaking practices, series on filmmaking practices, seems to um, got, um, has gone under sort of reconfiguration uh, with this like uh, provided dominant narrative that state provided. <coughs> And in which sort of like I, um, I'm sort of diverting from this like the notion of translator to Benshi that um, so when a Japanese film had this orator, um, narrator who explained what was going on the film during the dra especially in a dramatic film, well also like news film, they provided narratives. They also created narratives and they interpreted and they showed their interpretation. So it, it was rather like just seen as a profession as it was, but then uh, like can translate it has this freedom of being in Benshi too, I wondered. So the um, Professor Nonis's um, paper is focused on this late 1930s uh, <coughs> culture film, um, this goes on culture film or culture film. Um, specific like genre created by German uh, UFA um, studio. Then uh, Tommy the, like provided uh, probably in terms of historical like chronology, she provided like wider perspectives starting like from the twenties. So here, um, when we we uh, just heard about this like uh, the circle of theorists in you know, like discussion heated discussion about the film theory. And it was an intellectual community, like specific male-oriented community, although Asugi was a female translator. So like on the other hand, we again have just like middle class, upper middle class male community who really wanted to call them like baby and baby doll. So like, um, so another like interesting um, overlapping uh, class that we witness um, in these two papers. However, it seems like their interests are like in a different kind of direction. Um, going to different uh, directions. So, uh, Professor Tomita's presentation, in, in terms of the timeline, follows the time period that Oyazuko presented, well, she, with a focus on dramatic films, and then Oya uh, presented a very strong connection with the existing theatrical tradition, like kabuki, and filmmaking. But Tomita, this time, Tomita really emphasized a very specific, like, materiality of this film, like, gorge film, like, Koga, or Kogata Ega. And, um, and uh, her paper then questions this very dominant attention like paid to the genre of culture of film in the 1930s in specifically like Japanese film historical discourse. The culture film is the, probably a term like you find in a film history book, and Japanese film history book, which is the, you know, the representative term um, in the ninth, I mean, or that notion or activities that we ha need to learn about the 1930s in a film industry or like film history. But on the other hand, Tomita's question was how, you know, what happens if we look at the material, all those Kogata Ega, uh, Gage film, what we would look at, not only nonfiction film, we see the introduced like Disney uh, film and it made it uh, available to uh, common, Com I shouldn't say common people, but upper middle, middle class people. And also we see this nonfiction film uh, making enjoyed by a mature people. So we, um, in, a, in addition to that, because of this like mobility, easy handling uh, nature of Kogata Ega, so we also, our attention is uh, turned to the pro-Italian uh, film movement too. So um, it, it is a very interesting 
um, instrument or like an interesting, very interesting perspective to look at the very, very materiality of this, um, um, uh, the Kogata Ega to reread the history of um, 1920s and 30s um, Japanese film. And then also, um, so also I thought it was really interesting to um, learn about Kogata Ega because it really uh, turns our attention to the sort of reception space, the space of reception, uh, but it's not just like the, our conventional idea of reception, which is like in a dark space we watch, the audience watch film, like it's sort of dichotomy, dichotomized, like, you know, parties, like, you know, like uh, showing, I mean, the film, um, the screen, I mean, shown on the screen, and then like then the audience, a group of people are watching it. Instead, we see this like overlapping, like space of reception that practitioner is also the audience. And then this like group of people form their own class. Not, and then also this is not like university privilege, university circle, this like more like um, uh, circles like um, emerging from this like passion for like their like hobby. Um, so I thought it was really interesting to think about this space of reception and then also that um, this uh, also, like in terms of the location, when we look at like Japan's nationwide, how far it is, you know, Kogata Ega traveled. I mean, Tomita already showed that there, there are some like uh, films left, like in colonial territories, and then also Joanne's presentation like pointed out that we have those um, films like um, about Japan or like other nations in East Asia from that period. So like, I wonder like how far these materials like traveled. Also like in terms of like, even like in mainland Japan, um, when we look at the like theater, like um, um, the film industry and the development of movie theaters, we probably like connect these ideas with major cities in Japan. Like Sapporo is actually one of the really, the biggest cities to have like, you know, movie theaters, but like Nagoya, Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto. But then can this, you know, Kogata Ega uh, travel to like places like Tottori, for example? So um, the space of this like reception would be also interesting. Um, so I think, um, I want to make my just comment very brief. So like I'm just going to um, just pose two uh, question, one for each. So uh, one for Mark, um, Professor Nones is, so you discussed this like um, interesting mistranslation of film theory by Atsugi Taka. And then also pointed out the, um, the script written by this Tekino, um, uh, by Sekino, and he said in that, you know, that uh, notes in the, in the book, he said, so like because of this like bad translation, translation, it really like changed the understanding of film theory in Japan, or like the role of theory in Japan, and then would you agree or not? So what is the role of film theory in the end? I mean, eventually, it, I mean, for critics and audience and the society um, in general. Is it really possible for an, a bad translation could change the entire reception of the film history, history as theory in Japan? And a, a, another question, uh, I mean, I have another question, and it's for uh, Professor Tomita. So I would like to, I would appreciate it if you could speak about sort of like space, um, this Kogata Ega travels, and also, um, the mo sort of mode of uh, consumption or like um, of this Kogata Ega. And then especially I would like to know what happened to the production of this Kogata Ega afterwards during total war, I mean, especially during the Pacific War from 1941 to 45, even like the major studios had difficulty to secure print stock because of the you know, shortage of the, all those materials and also because of the Navy's control over print stock. So was the consumption I and mean, production decreased or increased uh, with the aid of state? Or I would be very curious what happened to Kogata Ega during uh, um, the early 1940s. 
Thank you.